Recently, the Danish Supreme Court made a major decision and struck down over a hundred years of legal precedent. And not everyone is thrilled to see such a sweeping change to their fundamental rights. The Danish courts ruled on a very contentious and complicated issue, one that impacts everyone in Denmark from the day of their birth to the day that they're buried. And of course, I'm talking about the very serious and complicated issue of flying flags. <laughs> Yeah, we're going to explain Denmark's kind of weird flag law, why until recently you couldn't fly the flag of other countries without special permission, and why the flag is so special to the Danes. In the process of our explanation, we're also going to unveil seven brand new national flag proposals that we had redesigned by Graphic Desire, who we hired on Fiverr, who is a sponsor of today's video. So why did we redesign other national flags? To make them look more Danish, of course. Denmark's flag is the oldest national flag still in use, and honestly, if you've ever met a Danish person, they've probably told you that in the first five minutes after you met. And part of what makes the flag so special is that literally it came from God. The legend is that in the Battle of Lindelisum in 1219, the Danish army was fighting in the Northern Crusades in what's now modern-day Estonia. The Danes were losing until suddenly in the sky appeared a white cross and a red field that fell to the army and inspired them to victory. Fast forward 800 years and the Danish flag is now not only used for official purposes, but it's also how your family and friends are going to decorate for your birthday, what stores will use in the window to mark a sale, and honestly it's just a symbol for a celebration of any kind. So to say they kind of like the flag is a bit of an understatement. So even though only 30% of Danes believe in God, almost all of them believe that God gave them a flag. And sure, he dropped it in Estonia, but Danes think it was meant for them and they took it with them as their own. Maybe it was somebody's birthday. But anyway, like all good legends, it doesn't really have to make sense. But to make it up to Estonia, we decided to have a brand new flag made for them. It's a similar flag designed with their current national flag, but mixed with elements of the Danish one that they almost got their hands on. And here's what it looks like. I like it. You know, I think we've been to Estonia and they've told us how they think of themselves as a Nordic country, as a Baltic country. So I think this kind of suits them getting a Nordic cross instead of three stripes. Yeah, I really like it. And I was actually a little bit worried that this one would look maybe a little bit too Finnish. But I like that it also, I mean, the Estonian flag shares some color combinations with the Finnish flag anyway, and they share a lot culturally. So I give this one five stars. I like really good. I like the way it looks. And I think it, it stays true to the actual Estonian flag too. Maybe if God had dropped this one, the battle would have been different. Again, we worked with Fiverr on this video and we found a graphic designer to redesign seven flags in the style of the Donnerbro or the Danish flag. So whether we're redesigning flags or most likely have other creative projects on our plate, Fiverr is the easiest and best way to get it all done. Their network of talented freelancers can fill in your talent gaps for your business and free up your schedule for the things that you do the best. Whether you have personal or business projects to complete, Fiverr can get that job done for you quickly and expertly. And because you're part of our special community, you can get it done for less. Just use our promo code and the link that we have in the description for 10% off your project. And use the time that you save to, I guess, watch the rest of this video, right? Yeah, now let's get to it. Now that we know where the beloved Donnebro or the Danish flag came from, when did the flags of other nations become banned in Denmark? Well, it all goes back to a 1915 law where flying flags other than the Danish national flag became illegal. The ordinance was meant to preserve Denmark's neutrality during World War I, based on a royal decree from 1854. Then, like today, there was a German minority living in Denmark and vice versa just across the southern border. In the late 1800s, there were several wars fought along this border, with flag repression common on both sides of the Danish-German border. So in summary, it was a law from 1915 with a very practical purpose based on a royal decree from the 1850s that reflected a tenuous political relationship with Germany at the time. Nowadays, of course, the relationship between Denmark and Germany is much better, and in fact, many Germans cross the border for summer holidays in Denmark, and then Danes go the opposite way, mostly for some cheap booze in Germany. And while obviously it wouldn't have prevented the war that was going on in 1915, this German version of the Danish flag is maybe a nice compromise and reimagination. Okay, it's definitely German. Um, it uh it's it's serving uh it feels aggressive i'm not gonna lie yeah, uh, yeah like somehow like denmark and norway take the red background and make it seem like it's full nice. tasteful and warm not like aggressive that, the black stripe is like the black i think the black coat yeah. because the, either the black stripe or you gotta do the black stripe as like the background that'd be kind of ominous having an all black i think it's just a 
difficult color combination to do well Nordic style. I hate to bring up other German flags, but it reminds me of yeah some that weren't. Um, were great. So I personally, I mean, there really weren't a lot of options. It's no. certainly German, and it it's a it's a hybrid of the two flags for sure. Like like I, the assignment was completed. I don't love the look of it. Though. I'd say keep the current German flag. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Of course, you could always fly the flags of Greenland and the Faroe Islands in Denmark. And over the decades that followed, exceptions were placed to allow raising the flags of the other Nordic countries. So. Finland, Iceland, Norway, and Swedish flags were always allowed to be flown in Denmark. In the post-war era, additional flags were allowed to be raised around Denmark as the country joined the UN and the EU. And even though they had been allowed for a while, we wanted to take a look at what they would be like if they had a new Donnebro-inspired style. I like it. Yeah, I think it's, it's a nice kind of blend of the Nordic cross and taking the EU circle of harmony in this way. I think it's a positive design. I'm, I'm happy with it. I love the EU flag. I actually, uh, and you have, I do flag. not have an EU passport, but I have an EU flag shirt and I like it. I would even put this on merch and wear this one. I yeah. like it. The only thing is not every Nordic country is in the EU, nope. so maybe it doesn't uh, fit the bill, but it definitely stays true to the coolest parts of both designs. I think the Nordic Cross is iconic. I think the EU flag is iconic. So I kind of like uh, this yeah. mix, you know? Maybe it's like uh, Bang Bang, the song with like Ariana Grande and Nicki Minaj. Like, like, you're, like you're taking two icons and putting them together. I like it. Yeah. I think that's, you said it. And Jesse J. I'm oh, sorry. Okay, I love this one. Yeah, I think this is a good one. I guess if you have like the, the Nordic countries working together in like UN type functions, this is perfect for them. It keeps the UN flag, has a Nordic cross. It's a color combination that you don't really have today. Nobody has kind of the light blue in this way. I would go even a step further and say that every time a Nordic country has one of the rotating seats on the UN Security Council, that this should be the flag. Like they hit plant in they front of them. Um, or at least yeah. put it on the uh, podium when they give some kind of speech. I like this one a lot. This one. And um, this one. yeah, I don't know. And you know what? I I mean, a lot of the Nordic countries have played an outsized role in the UN. Of course. And um, I don't know. Give them this flag, maybe. I like it. Denmark's membership in the UN and EU were part of maintaining peace and prosperity, both here and beyond. But recently, there was a new exception added to the rules in response to the shattering of peace that occurred with the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Shortly after the invasion, the flag of Ukraine was given the same exemption to be able to be flown without a need for a special permission. We wanted to combine the two flags as well and see what a Denmark-inspired Ukrainian flag would look like. Hopefully, this would be another way to express solidarity with the Ukrainian people at this time. Okay, it's, it's giving Sweden. Yeah, I, um... And look, I think that uh, that uh, there's obviously a lot of solidarity between the Swedish people and the Ukrainian people and the Ukrainian people in the world right now. I just don't know if this flag is the right way to honor that solidarity. It's a little too Swedish. I was afraid that this could happen, but sure. really no. I guess it was kind of unavoidable. We should have expected that. Yeah. Um, but also, like, I think we're all rallying around the Ukrainian flag right now. So why touch something that is perfect the way it is? Exactly. Exactly. But I will say there is a nice connection between, I'd say, the Swedes and the Ukrainians, since I think it's the Swedish Vikings that were some of the one founded key founded the Kievan roots. Yeah. So there's there is a connection there as well. And maybe maybe the historic connection doesn't require such a flag like this. The Ukrainian yeah, could, flag works works as, as it is. Yeah. Now, prior to the Danish Supreme Court stepping in, you could always apply for permission from the local police to fly the flags of other countries. But that was usually on the condition that a Danish flag of at least equal size was hoisted alongside of the foreign flag. So what about the flag controversy escalated to a Supreme Court ruling in the first place? Well, this all goes back to 2017 when the Helga family from Kulling, a city in western Denmark, were surprised to see the police come to their door. There were complaints from a neighbor, and the police were demanded that they remove an American flag they had been flying for about a month, or else they were going to face a fine of about 2,500 krona, about 330 euros. The family said they were not acting in bad faith, but they chose to fly the flag because they had a deep affection for American culture. Aww. The family was ordered to stay in trial for violating the 1915 ordinance, with prosecutors citing a similar case from the year 1934. In that case, the Soviet flag was flown, and the courts determined that the rule was valid even during peacetime. 
Now, the family was acquitted with the argument that the flag ban was no longer legally binding, but things went back and forth in the courts from the year 2017 all the way until July of 2023. That's when the Supreme Court stepped in and finally said that the flag banning was not legally binding. Yeah. Well, even though they won in court, they had to realize they lived next to that busybody neighbor, which sounds like punishment enough. And I don't think the neighbor would have been happy about this one either. But as a bit of a compromise between everybody and Kohling, we wanted to design a Danish-American hybrid flag just for him. Okay. I mean, I thought I would like this more. Stars and... But also, I think it's the only... Yeah, I think this... Yeah. I mean, assignment completed as expected. I guess I envisioned something a little bit... I mean, different. I mean, it's... I don't know how many ways you can do stars nor to cross. Maybe they could have done it with the... So the blue field in the upper left corner like they did with the UN flag. But yeah. Also, it feels a little bit... Civil War era to, yeah. to maybe maybe yeah. kind of say where we're at over. I'm sensing it. A little stars and bars. Stars and bars. I don't, um, you know, I think that what? the U.S. and Denmark have two iconic flags. Why mess with what works? But this was a neat attempt. And, and um, I think the compromise is two flagpoles, not one flag. Yes. Of course, there are places all around the world that either have Danish-inspired names or are known for being the home to many Danish immigrants. Many know in the U.S. about the town of Solvay in California or Elkhorn, Iowa, both of which were founded by a number of dates. Close to our personal hometowns, there's places called Jutland, New Jersey, and Copenhagen, New York, just showing how far Denmark has influence. But we decided to go about as far away from Denmark as possible for our next flag design, which is from the city of Denmark in... Western Australia. Now, I'm not sure if you could put a Fuskestein in the Barbie, but we definitely can offer a Donobro inspired flag to the good people who live there. Okay, Iceland wins this one. Uh, Hi. Uh, I like this because it does take the, the black swan, which is the symbol of Western Australia, moves it from the bottom right on its normal state flag to put it in that top left. I like that. And it mixes the colors of Australia, gets rid of the, the Union Jack in that left corner, I think. It is giving Iceland with a black swan. I think maybe if they did anything, they could have put the Southern Cross in one of the other planes. That would have been me. If I were to do anything to uh, touch this one up, I would do that. But that's actually the nice thing about working with designers on uh, on Fiverr is that you can have them do edits uh, and they'll, they'll let you know the process if you want edits. So we didn't request any edits, but... If I were going to make one, I would ask for the Southern Cross. Maybe in the upper right. Mm. Yeah. Mm. I hope Princess Mary enjoyed that one especially, and I'd love to visit Denmark, Australia someday. But speaking of Danish names and weird Danish laws, did you know that there's also a naming law that defines how a baby can be given a name and even what names you can give them? Now, to avoid you giving your baby an illegal name, we've created a video that you can watch right here that will tell you more about the Danish naming law and even some more surprising facts about Denmark that you may not already know. So thank you to Fiverr for sponsoring today's video. Check out this one here, and thank you guys for watching today. Hi, hi. hi.